All right, today, guys, we are going to take our cube root functions. We're going to perform some transformations to them, move them up, down, left, right, sometimes uh, do some uh, vertical stretches, vertical compressions, even uh, there's a few of them with uh, horizontal stretches and compressions. So anyways, uh, here's your parent function again. This is what a uh, typical cube root function kind of looks like. Go over one and then you uh, cube root that and that'll be up one. Or if you go over eight and then cube root that, that'll be up two. You'll all kind of have that pattern going on with it there on both sides there. So uh, remember domain and range for both the domain and range, it goes up and down forever, so negative infinity to infinity, and then range is from negative infinity to infinity as well. And then x and y intercepts, whoops, are at zero comma zero. Okay, now as far as getting your graphs going here for these, um, you can start out with this one. This one is uh, plus five outside, so that means you're going to move up five units. So we'll start way up here, and then from there you can kind of go and do your pattern. If you go over one and then do the cube root of that, that'll be up one. And then if you go backwards one and then cube root that, that'll be down one right there. Okay, and then you can go get some other points over eight, and then up two right there. The cube root of eight is two, so it's kind of like way over there off the graph. And then to the left, eight, and then over... Um, or down to would kind of get you this right here and then that would be your graph so usually you can't get all the points on a grid like this here but I know these three middle points is what you want to get and then just kind of make sure you have the right shape to your graph so make sure it's kind of flat looking now if you wanted to go and get the table I would go and figure out where the center is moving so we said oh it moved up five and then I'd put you know, that x value right there, that's 0, and then we got 5, and then I would plug in numbers around 0. Like we could go plug in 1, we could go do the cube root of 1, the cube root of 1 is 1, and then 1 plus 5 will be 6. That's what we got there. If we go do the cube root of negative 1, cube root of negative 1, oops, would be negative 1, negative 1 plus 5 would be 4. And then Remember, you want to make sure you choose numbers that you can do the cube root of. So if I do like 2, I guess we can't really do the cube root of 2. So I like to choose numbers that will be perfect cubes inside when I plug them in. So the next perfect cube number or something that I can do the cube root of will be 8 right there. So if I do the cube root of 8, that would be 2. And then 2 plus 5 right there would get a 7. And then the same thing, you can go get negative 8 there. If you're going to do the table, and the cube root of negative 8 would uh, be negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 would be 3. And then that would be your graph. So let's do this next one here. And the next one, uh, the graph is going to move to the right 3. So if you want to go over here and graph it 3 units to the right, if you know the little pattern that I kind of talked about earlier, then you can go and graph it easily, but you can also make a table to graph it, so it doesn't really matter. Your table would start at positive 3, though. It'd be 3, comma 0, and then you'd just go from there, you know, plugging in certain numbers. Since I know the pattern here, if you go over 1 and then cube root that, that's up 1. If you go over 8 and then cube root that, that'll be up 2, so way out here. If you uh, go backwards one and then cube root that, that'll be negative one. And then if you go over eight and then cube root that, that'll be negative two right there. So you get this graph. Line them like that. Okay, and then if you wanted some points here to plug in, kind of like the last time, we can go choose the numbers there. Um, obviously four works out pretty good here. Four minus the cube root of four minus three. Make sure you do four minus three first before you do the cube root. So that'd be one right there. Now obviously you couldn't do the cube root of five minus three because that'd get you two. So we'd have to almost use a little bit of logic of like what would make eight inside of that radical right there. So what number can I subtract three from and get eight? I believe that would be 11. So you could say like 11 minus 3 inside of the cube root, that would get you 8. 
and then the cube root of 8 would be 2. And that's how you can build the rest of your table. So I think we got 2, negative 1, and then, um, you know, once again, ask yourself what number would get you negative 8, I guess, inside of the radical, so, because you could cube root that. That would be negative 5. So negative 5, that would get you negative 2 right there, and then there's your table. So using a table can be kind of helpful for these, but if you memorize the pattern, then these actually graph really, really quick. Okay, so this next page here, I think we're going to work on some vertical uh, compressions and stretches and that type of stuff here. So with this one here, it looks like we got a vertical stretch. Notice you got four out in front. So that means everything will be four times as tall. So a typical X cube graph looks like this here. Here's our parent function. Kind of like that. All right, so then this next one here will be, everything will be four times as tall. So if you were to go over one and then up one, now instead of going up one, we gotta go over one and then up four. So you'd be way up there. And then same thing with backwards. Instead of doing the cube root of negative one is negative one, you can say the cube root of negative one is negative one, but then times it by four, so you'll be down there. All right. So kind of looking like this right here. It's still going to be kind of flat. It's going to flatten out eventually. It's just going to start out real steep there in the middle. Right there. Um, and then I guess, oh, we're going to do the same exact thing here with negative 4 out in front. So that is just a reflection. That's going to reflect it down uh, across the x-axis. Actually, I pro it'd probably be good to write out the transformations on these. Reflect across x-axis and these, these are also vertical stretches okay so here's what that would look like here it's pretty much the same thing except it's going down and then going down four times as much so kind of like this right here so there's all those graphs I don't like this a ton here because you have so many graphs at the same exact time but really you want to kind of compare them to this blue graph just because that's kind of what you got you know that's like your main parent function right there and then I guess the negatives just show that it's a reflection so okay the next one here guess what these here since there's a one half for your a value these are going to be vertical shrinks And then I guess one of them's a reflection and then one of them's not. So I'm going to once again go ahead and graph the parent function again, just so we have it. Kind of up and then like that. Okay, so I guess I'll do this negative one right here. So it's negative half. So first of all, it's going down. But then instead of going down one, we're only going to go down a half a unit. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Go backwards and then up a half a unit right there. So it's a little bit flatter looking here than we call these vertical compressions right here. So something kind of like that. And then I guess uh, here in purple I'll do this last graph right here. So that'll be one half. And I like comparing this one here with the parent function because you can really you can see how much flatter it is comparatively to the parent function right there. So that the, the blue and the purple graph, the, the blue graph is the parent function. This is the cube root of x, and then this one was the one-half cube root oh, whoops, of x. Right there. So much flatter looking. Okay, uh, next one here, this one's got a number inside. So both of these here, these are going to be horizontal things that are going on. And remember, everything inside of the parentheses or inside of the, the radical, I guess, in this case here, uh, is opposite of what we think. So we think this is a horizontal stretch. It's actually the total opposite. This is a horizontal compression. Okay. Now, for these, typically, I'd make a table because it's kind of hard to do the horizontal compressions. Uh, I mean, there's a couple rules you can memorize, but to me, it's a little bit easier just to go ahead and make a table for these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I guess I'll color code. We'll do this one here in blue. 
Um, and I need to do x first. So there's x. All right, so anyways, uh, since you're not moving up, down, left, or right, the vertex is going to be at 0, comma 0. So that's always a nice point to start out with. And then let's think about like numbers I guess we can go and plug in real easy and then do the cube root of here. So actually if we plug in 1, you got to be kind of careful here. You'd have 2 times 1 and then eventually you'd have the cube root of 2 right there, which is not a nice clean number. And that's not something I'd want to be graphing there. So I want to think about numbers right here that when I plug it in, like eventually you want like square root of 1, or I'm sorry, not square root, you want cube root of 1 and like cube root, I guess, of 8 right there. So if I make x 1 half right there, and then I plug it in, that we can actually deal with. So the cube root of, of 2 times 1 half is the same thing as the cube root of 1, which will get us positive 1 right there. Okay, the same argument can be used for negative 1 half, square root of 2 times negative 1 half, it's going to be this, the, the cube root of, of negative 1, and then the cube root of negative 1 is, is negative 1 as well. Okay, and then I guess uh, the next number, think about, uh, we, we want it to eventually look like an 8 inside the radical. So I guess if we do 2 times 4, that would get us that 8. So 2 times 4 is the cube root of 8, and then the cube root of 8 would get us 2. And then I guess the same exact thing. Uh, if you did uh, negative 4, that would get you negative 2. And then there you go. With that right there, now we can go and plot some of those points, and it would be much, much easier to go and graph that. So negative 4, negative 2, kind of down here. Uh, negative half, negative 1, so kind of right there. Okay, uh, 0, 0, 1, half, 1. And then 4, 2. So it's a little bit squished in horizontally. We call that a horizontal compression there. Now, the other table for this next one, I guess we'll do it here in red. Let's see if I can make that line up better. Um, so with this one, x, y, same idea. We want to start with 0 and plug in 0, you get 0. And then if we plug in 1 half, now, since there's that negative right there, that's going to be negative 1, and the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 right there. So basically all the signs are going to be backwards, as opposed to our last one there. Negative half, positive 1, and then I guess uh, negative 4, and then positive 2. And we'll go and plot all those points. There's where that graph looks like. There you go. So not too bad there. So horizontal compression. Uh, either make a table or use your graphing calculator for that. And those will be doable that way. Okay. Uh, last one here. This is kind of like as hard as this might uh, get here. So we got a cubic function right here. Models of profit. Um, Y in thousands of dollars X months after a cafe opens for business. What is a graph of the function? So first of all, I'm going to kind of graph a few of the points, like some of the main points, I guess, that we need to be looking at. And then we'll talk about like what truly we need to look at here for the graph. So anyways, um, starting this uh, plus one right there. Remember that moves us to the left. So it was a left translation. And then you got plus four. So left one plus four, there's where the graph begins right there. All right, so that's kind of like our center point there. Now, typically from that center point, we go over one and up one, but we have a vertical translation. So that vertical, tra or not translation, vertical stretch. So vertical stretch right there, that multiplies everything by two. So everything's going to be twice as high now. So instead of going over one and then cube rooting that, we're going to go over 1, cube root it, and then multiply it by 2. So it'll be a little bit higher than the same thing here on the other side. Okay, instead of going over 8 units, which would be, think about right here. So instead of going over 8 and then up 2, we need to go twice as high, so we'll go up to 4 right there. 
and then same thing on this other side here. Instead of going backwards eight and then down two, we're going to go down twice as much right there. Okay. Now, actually, I don't want you to sketch the full graph here because if you think about this here, if this is a word problem right here, this is a word problem. We're talking about monthly profit where um, I guess X is the number of months. We can't really have negative months at all here. So actually, this side of the graph here, that's to the left, uh, we, we don't really look at that graph. So really, the only piece of the graph that we're truly going to look at is going to be starting here at zero and then kind of going up like that right there. So that's the only piece whoops, that you need to worry about here with your graph. Okay, and then from there, we can go, I guess, and answer any follow-up questions here. Um, I guess they don't really ask us any questions. Like, but, you know, for example, if, they, if they're asking, hey, what's going on after, you know, like 10 months or something like that, we could go and plug in 10 into your equation, and then you'd be good to go. But the big thing is you only graph, really, the right side of this graph here since you can't have negative months. So, all right, what do we got here? Uh, the cube root, oh, okay, we're going to write the equation. The cube root parent function is reflected over the x-axis and translated three units to the right and then two units down. So let's think about this here. Cube root graph right here, kind of like this. It's going right three units, so that would be minus three inside of the radical. And then two units down is minus two outside of the radical. And then if there's a reflection, that means we need a negative out in front of the radical right there. Actually, I need to be more specific. If it's a reflection across the x-axis, it would be outside. Now, if it was a reflection across the y-axis, you'd put it inside the radical right there. Okay, with this one here, these are kind of tricky here. Uh, you got to take a graph here and um, write an equation that matches it here. So the center is not moving left or right. It's right there at the origin. So I know that this is going to be like the cube root of x, and then you could say plus 0, and then plus another 0, really. But really, it's just the cube root of x. And then we got some type of a coefficient. We don't know what the vertical stretch factor is. So I'm just going to write it kind of like this here. And then what I'm going to do is take that point, a comma negative 8, and then I'm going to plug it in for x and y so I can go back and figure out what a is. So we'll plug in negative 8 for y. We'll plug in, we'll just keep a as a. And then we got 3 out there and then 8 for the x. All right, and that's the cube root of 8, and that'll be 2. So we'll say 2a is equal to negative 8. Therefore, once you divide by 2, the stretch factor is going to be negative 4. A is negative 4, and then now we can go and actually write a model. So we'll say negative 4 cube root of x right there, and then that'll be the answer right there. All right. Next one here, we need to model this situation here. So let's see, we got the volume of the cylinders between 16 cubic units and 250 cubic units. Uh, inclusive just meaning including those values. The height of the cylinder is two times the radius. What are the possible minimum and maximum radius and heights of the cylinder? Okay, and then they give us the formula. So anyways, big thing here with this, if the height is two times the radius, I'm going to scratch out that height right there, and then I'm going to write two times r right there. So we know that has that type of ratio there. So when I come up with my equation, I'm not sure if it's going to show up real good here, so I'm going to write it above. But when I come up with my equation, the volume is pi r squared times our height. So instead of our height, we're going to plug in the 2r. All right, and then if you remember your exponent loss here, this is going to be pi, and then I guess r cubed, and then you got the 2, so I'll put 2 out in front. So 2 pi r cubed for the volume. All right, and then I guess we're trying to figure out the different radiuses that get us 16 pi and 250 pi. So I guess this will be kind of like a two-part problem. So the first part here will go 16 pi for the volume equals pi r squared, or pi r cubed, I'm sorry. And then, um, 
Yeah, that's our 2 pi r cubed. I'm using the wrong formula there. I'm looking at that top one. So it equals 2 pi r cubed. And then I guess we're going to go ahead and get r by itself. So we'll do that by dividing by 2. And that'll get us 8. And actually, we can divide by 2 pi and cancel out the pi's. So that'll just be 8 equals r cubed. And then if we cube root both sides, that'll get us r equals 2. Okay. Right now, to get the maximum value, we're going to plug in 250 over here, 250 pi. And then equals, I guess, the 2 pi r cubed. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2 pi. And then the 2 pi is on the left side, cancel out, and then we'll get 125 on the left hand side, or I'm sorry, the yeah, the left hand side right there. And then you have uh, r cubed over there, so we'll cube root both sides. Let's find my thing we'll write here, and then that'll get us r is equal to the cube root of 125 is, is 5 right there. So I guess for the answer on this here, we can, we can say our radius if it's between 16 pi cubic units and 250 pi cubic units for the volume, we can say the radius needs to be between 2 and 5, I guess. Uh, and then if we go and put, um, I guess we don't have units here, so you could just say 2 units and 5 units is what it needs to be between. And I believe that is it.